In this tutorial, we're going to talk about using magic links for logging in. Uh, it's going to be based on device still, but we're going to take out the password scenario and use a gem called device passwordless. And it's honestly my first time running this and I'm kind of going on the fly for this video, but I wanted to walk you through how I would approach it if I were adding it to an existing app or a new app. I'm going to create a new app right now. Uh, Rails new device magic links. Uh, I'll just do my typical tailwind and I like to use bun lately for J JS stuff. So I'll run that creates a new app, scaffold it up, uh, basically going to get that rolling and then we'll go and install device, which is our next step. I'll go to the link here and I've done device over and over and over, but I'm going to still walk through it one more time. So it's a full tutorial. Uh, once this is ready, we'll be able to do that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward as far as setting up in your app. Okay. CD device magic links. Cool. I'll open that in code. VS code, I should say. And uh, let's go to first uh, the gym file. We'll run and add device that way. I'll just throw it at the end and run bundle great um device has an installer so we can run that i always forget the actual name convention if you run down and run this one here we'll do that next rails generate device colon install to do that now it's going to give you some steps to do here in the output you can go ahead and do that i'm going to add this to our development file and open that. Probably just throw it at the end as well. Localhost 3000 is kind of the default when you run Rails server or whatever server you want to invoke. You can actually change the server if you go to your procfile.dev. You can change this in Ruby setup here to be more explicit to say like 400 or 5000 or 5, 4000 or 5000 instead of 3000. Up to you how you want to do it. Um, but let's close that out. I've got that set up. One other step, I think, what was in our logs. We've got our notice. If you want to generate the views, you can. Um, I don't know if we need to for this scenario, but I'll see if we need to along the way. We'll see how things turn out. Uh, but next, I'll do Rails generate device model. It could be anything here. And you can have multiple models with device. It's just dependent on how you're going to do authentication with that. In mind, user is pretty common, so I'm going to roll with that. Um, you might have like something like member or, I don't know, account, whatever you want to use. And that's essentially it. We'll just run the migration. And it goes and creates a new table for users for us. Adds a couple things to our user model. Right here, our device setup. We also have some new routes that are added. Fortivize, it's like a helper method, which we'll need to tweak here once we add the other gem. So let's do that now. I'll go to device passwordless is what it's called. And you can run bundle add or just throw it in your gem file. I'll do bundle add this time. Fetches it from Ruby gems. Okay, and we need to run the installer for that. Rails generate device and then passwordless install. That will do a couple things. Inserts some configurations into the device initializer, which was added during install of device. And then it creates a new view for a magic link, which is going to have the link that you'll click to go log in. And then updates some local locales so you have translations and stuff all ready to go. Let's go check out the initializer. So I'll say uh, device and we can see what was inserted. He might need to change the sender to be whatever, like Andy at webcrunch.com just for grins. And I think there's some stuff added for password lists. Options you can set here. It uses the signed global ID tokenizer for the config password tokenizer. So it's all based on tokens. So you don't necessarily have to have database changes. So it's stateless tokens. So you don't need to have data entries or anything for the, say the password in this case, 
which could be at some point maybe exposed by some breach or whatever. It's kind of safer in that regard, but it's also the UX is a little, I, I guess, not perfect, but also trying to remember your password is also not perfect. So that's, I think, why this pattern, you know, came to be. Um, you could have passwords added as well as uh, Magic Link. So you can do, I've seen this on a lot of apps where you'll go, uh, you can enter your password or just get a Magic Link if you want both. Have the option. Maybe you don't have your password in mind or your maybe you keep it in some other password manager and you can't remember your password for that and that would be bad but that's one of those scenarios where that might be a thing uh, also in our user we get um, a new addition we'll need to add here called magic link authentic oh, that's a mouthful authenticatable so i'll add that in the uh strategies for the user I don't know if we removed database authenticatable, but I could be wrong. It doesn't say to. Plays nice with the existing ones, which is a perk for sure. It's great to not have to like really remove a bunch of device specific stuff. Um, I'd really recommend checking out the README. It's quite vast, but I'm going to roll with the basic stuff for now, uh, just so it's clear how this really works. So we add that new magic link, and then on our routes, we'll extend our users helper to include a new controller for our um, sessions, which is going to use device, passwordless, and sessions there. If you see autocomplete, I have a AI kind of built into the code editor. It's called Cody and it uses Claude th uh, 3 right now, I think, is the actual um, Claude 3 Sene, yeah. Sonnet or Sony, Sony. I don't know how to say that, but hopefully I'm saying it right. Okay, I'm gonna make a basic controller for just having a, a home page. So maybe I'll generate Rails, generate static uh, home. I'll just use index. It should be controller static index. So it creates an index action on the static controller. That gives us a place to call home. Just a basic get request there. So I'll go to that controller. We should have an index there and then an actual page that should be our home page. We just say, hello world, something like that. That gives us foundation. Now if we boot the app, we can see what is happening go to 3000 pretty simple right let's add a sign in link just so we have something on that page do a little tailwind here um maybe sign up Okay, gotta spell that right. Cool, so I will um, put the heading here and we'll have like just a div. Well, that's not exactly what I wanted. I just want some space between these links. Okay, they'll be in the center. Nothing fancy here, but just something to go off of. I'll do a slight container, MX auto offset quite a bit. There. Cool, so if I sign in, we get our typical thing. There is a password field here, so I think I'm going to generate the device views and tweak those. So Rails G device colon views, it should create those views in our app um, already existing of the mailer. The ones we need to tweak, I think I saw in the docs are to remove 
device passwords. So basically recursively remove that folder. If I could say there, basically just run these commands. There. So that deleted a few lines of our views. It should be password specific stuff. Um, and then I think on registrations, it's not there. Password change reset instructions. Okay, yeah, we still have a password field here, but we need to edit and remove the references. So in our registrations new, we'll need to remove both the, the password and password confirmation. I think, I don't know about this uh, current password thing. Okay, yeah, you remove that. So that is on registrations edit, excuse me, I'm going out of order. So I will go into new and remove password from that. In the confirmation, cool. And then in sessions new, delete the password field. Awesome. So this is not styled by any means, but if we give um, example.com and I submit this, well, I'm logged in, so I need to sign up first. So John Doe at example.com. If I hit sign up, I'll get a redirect. Uh, let's see if our log spit out an emailer. Okay, let's see if I could sign in. No, I'm signed on. So you're automatically signed in. Cool. Okay, so let's try a uh, sign out link on our index. So we'll say if user signed in, we'll have a button to sign out. And we're going to use a button to for that because of turbo. And else we'll render these links. So if I sign out, I'm signed out now. If I go to log in and say John Doe at example.com, what happens? Okay, here's the email. So it might be useful to get something like um, what you might call it a um, letter opener. Maybe we could add that, but the link essentially gives you a link to click here. In fact, I'll go and maybe add that. All right, let's do that for development group, gym file. I'm gonna just put it in the group. All right, I'm gonna open the development. Add these lines, reboot the server, bundle. Okay, and then more server stuff to boot it back up. I think without doing much, you can already have this working. It should boot, should hit, kick a, a link off. Let's see if I'm logged in though. Yeah, so sign in. John Doe at example.com. There it goes. So now is my link. Click the link, I'm signed in. So just like that, we're able to have authentication without passwords. Pretty handy, honestly. I've never really used this pattern. I'm so used to devise being the default with a password. I know you can use it um, in other ways or extend it to use OAuth and stuff like that, but this feels pretty pretty quick as far as UX. The end user, of course, needs to check their email, which is also a thing where you're like, well, I have to go enter a password there, but chances are you're already logged in, whether it's on your phone or a client on your desktop. So. Um, I think that's the approach that's worth using. Um, definitely a cool thing, especially if you want to keep it very lean. I find it um, a nice pattern. So take that for what it's worth. Hopefully this was useful. I know I went through it fast. Um, but yeah, check out this gem, device passwordless. Add it to your app, see what you think. Um, I like it. That's my final vote. <laughs> All right. So long for now. Peace. Hello Hotwire is a free course geared toward building Ruby on Rails apps with Hotwire from the ground up. Visit hellohotwire.com to learn more.